In this three steps to sketch, we are going to tackle the graph of a cosine graph that at first glance may look really intimidating, but once we break it down, we'll see that it's no problem at all. It's actually a pretty easy one. So we're going to look at y equals cosine of pi over two x. Okay, don't be intimidated, let's jump in. So we have our trusty outline, we have our grid. Okay, remember that this method is for our unshifted cosine graphs. They're in the form y equals a cosine bx. Okay, you can see that this graph is in that form. So let's jump in and start by finding our essentials, a and b. We understand that there's a one in front of cosine as the coefficient, so we know our a is one, our amplitude of the graph is one, that's the distance from midline to either max or min, and we see our b is this number here, pi over two. Okay, it's a little bit strange to have this as our b value, um, but stick with it, you'll see how it gets a lot easier. Um, and remember that that really is just a number, 3.14 divided by two, it's a little more than one and a half. Okay, and let's even write that out for ourselves. We know that's about 1.57. So when we're thinking about B, remember it, it tells you, first of all, how many cycles happen between zero and two pi. Um, and then secondly, it helps you find the period. So let's do that now. Our period should be two pi divided by B. So we have two pi divided by pi over two. So that's really multiplying by two over pi. Okay, and just to make that easier, let's rewrite two pi over one. And you can see that that's four pi over pi, or really the pi is cross cancel. So our period is just four. So it's not in terms of pi. It takes four units for one complete horizontal cycle to happen. Okay, so let's pick some scale labels. Remember with this method, the horizontal scale labels are chosen very intentionally we take our period and we divide it by four. And that really sets us up for some good success in the next step. So all our key points will align with our tick marks. So take our period, divide by four. So we will count by ones for our horizontal axis and our vertical axis. We are usually choosing whatever the value of A is. One is a great scale for the vertical axis as well. All right, so let's label we are just counting by ones. So go ahead and label and enjoy how nice and easy that is. Hopefully you're seeing a little bit of how this, this equation that might have looked really intimidating is actually not that bad at all. All right, so we labeled our horizontal axis. We're labeling our vertical axis. We're excited to count by ones. Let's make that look a little neater here negative two, negative three. Okay, so we are all set up. Now we can move on to the big step, step two, plot key points. So our cosine pattern, our standard cosine pattern, pattern is maximum zero, minimum zero. Okay, we don't see any negative signs out front, so this is not reflecting. We know we are good to stick with that, so we can jump in and plot these points. So our first point, our maximum for these types of cosine equations always falls on the y-axis. And we look to A to set the y-coordinate. So our maximum will be at zero, one. Okay, and remember we designed our tick marks to be very helpful. So all our key points should line up with these tick marks. So we have maximum, our zero happens at our first tick mark. Our minimum happens at the next tick mark and the y-coordinate's just the opposite of A. And then we have another zero at the third tick mark. All right, so you've got your key points for one cycle. If you want, and I usually like, like to do this, I like to plot the first point in the next cycle just so I have something to connect to. Um, moving on to step three. So I'm going to sketch this cycle. And here's our characteristic cosine curve. All right, so we've got that. Let's Repeat, let's graph a few more cycles here. So we follow that same pattern, max, zero, min, zero, repeat. Okay, let's sketch that cycle in. I'll try to do it a little bit neater. K 
Okay, and let's sketch a couple on the other side of the y-axis. So make sure that you, you know your key points are four, that's your pattern, so you should be a multiple of four away from the green cycle that you've drawn. So we'll start with a maximum at negative eight, one, a zero, a minimum, a zero, a maximum, a zero, a minimum, a zero. You are just repeating that pattern over and over again until you have as many cycles as you want. All right. One final thing before we finish up, um, let's go back to that value for B. Remember B is pi over two or about 1.57. And it tells us how many cycles should happen between zero and two pi. So we don't have our horizontal axis labeled in terms of pi, but we do know that two pi is about 6.28. Okay, so we can see that two pi would be about here on our graph. Okay, that is two pi. I'm switching colors here just to not make it confusing. Okay, so this is about two pi. And so we can look and see, well, how many cycles are happening between zero and two pi. We know it should be about one and a half, just a little bit over or pi over two. So let's see from zero to two pi, we have a quarter cycle, a half cycle, three quarters, a full cycle, one and a quarter, one and a half, a little bit more than one and a half. So we should feel really confident that this graph is the perfect graph of y equals cosine pi over two x.